Hey all, happy Friday. Thank you for joining me here tonight. We're continuing on the Aurafil block of the month. We are doing all the embroidery on it. So tonight we will be doing the embroidery on the house and we'll be working on the embroidery of another one of the strips here. So uh, thank you guys for joining me. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish where we make cute embroidery kits for the beginning crafter. And I'm here every weekend, or not every weekend, every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. I'm thinking about the weekend. We're getting there. We're close, you guys. <laughs> uh, but I'm here at 8.30 p.m. every weeknight, at, uh, and that's 9.30 Eastern and 6.30 Pacific. And it's a time that we can just relax and craft together. Uh, so again, tonight we're working on the Aurafil Block of the Month project. And this is actually my block, so I got to be one of the designers for the Aurafil project, the Aurafil block of the month uh, this year. And this is my block for Tuscany. Uh, this is my new rendition of it. So the uh, I, I got some really pretty orange fabric for the original, so you'll have seen that on the Aurafil blog and on the pattern. And now I'm trying to do a similar thing with fabrics from my stash. So these are some cute little dotted fabric. My gray that I'm using in all of the quilt that I'm making now with all the other blocks and this kind of this like fun little floral that was in in my stash as well. And I still think it looks like that nice like Tuscan sun uh, with the lavender field. So we're going to continue on the embroidery. Tonight we're going to be doing the satin stitch to start out with. Uh, it's a nice basic stitch to fill in small spaces and it ends up looking very shiny and satiny because all the stitches are going in the same direction so it's kind of a fun a fun look so uh, we'll be doing that and then we'll be stitching more of the single chain stitches or sometimes people think of them as lazy daisy stitches I uh, will be doing that again in one of these columns we probably won't finish that but uh, we'll get a good head start. So awesome, you guys. Thanks for joining me. Uh, let's get going. Okay, so here again is the pattern. It is a free pattern uh, over on the Aurafil blog. I did put a link to that in the description. Uh, it's free, and you'll get to my blog post uh, about it as well. So what we're doing tonight is we are going to do the satin stitch windows and then we will go ahead and do more of the um, little single chain stitches here. So the instructions are on page five. I'm going to just zoom ahead here. So here we go. Here are the satin stitch instructions and the single chain stitches. And I, I did a bunch of that yesterday, so be sure to watch yesterday's video. But here again, we are going to do those little stitches right there. So all right. Here is my block so far. I love it. Um, it was really fun picking the fabrics out with you guys. Uh, I'm I'm liking how we did this two same colors, the two of the same fabrics, but with different colors there. I think that was kind of fun. So, all right, last night we stitched in all of these bits here, all of the single chain stitches, and we are gonna start with the satin stitches tonight. We've already drawn in the um, pencil lines from the other night. Uh, so we'll be, we'll be uh, uh, stitching that right now. Oh, I'm just reading instructions. Oh, Colleen says that she finished the windows and she added, added a door. So that's, that's really fun. Okay, and the other thing is, you know, last night I was using these Wisecraft uh, thread conditioners. I'm gonna do that again tonight. I'm having a lot of fun working with them. I've never used thread conditioner on uh, um, embroidery floss before last night, and it was working really well. I didn't get a single tangle. I didn't get a single knot the entire time. So here's the third uh, fragrance that she has. It's the Huga uh, fragment, fragrance, and I think this one kind of smells like like if you had like a warm blankie in like a pear um, orchard or, or something, you were you were having a picnic under a pear tree. How about that? That's what kind of what this one smells like. Oh, I love it. So this one we're gonna use today, uh, and then we also used these yesterday, the rainfall and the earl gray. We'll trade around with them again tonight, but I know they 
I'm having a lot of fun using them. It's it's kind of like a little. Uh, a, I was thinking last night. It was kind of like a little luxury part of of stitching. Like probably not completely necessary, but they smell amazing, and you can smell smell it while you stitch. And uh, um, and then you don't get any any knots on top of it, so that's that's great. So I'm gonna just uh, slide it through here, just putting my thumb on it and just sliding it right through. It's basically beeswax. It's like beeswax, coconut oil, and um, some scent, which is probably oil based. I'm I'm guessing. And I just ran it through once. You can do it more than once probably, but I think this is plenty. It just gives a little bit of a stiffness to the thread and uh, I didn't get any knots at all when I was doing these stitches last night. So something I'm playing with, uh, some of you guys have said that you've used thread conditioners before and I just had that little beeswax that I sometimes use when hand stitching with just like sewing thread and I thought I'd give this a go. Oh, uh, Diane says it's Danish for cozy. <laughs> I think that's that's the perfect description. The the Hugo, uh, I think that's something like that. I don't know quite how you pronounce it, but um, that's Danish for cozy. Fun. Oh, thanks, Karen. Karen says the block looks beautiful. I just love your fabric and color choices. Oh, I think I, I'm I'm really happy with this floral fabric. I was not expecting that to be so pretty. All right, I think I'm gonna just weave into the backs of these stitches and then we'll just jump up and start with this this window over here. And then I'm just gonna kind of leap to each window. We'll see how much I can do with this thread. So I'm gonna just, I don't tie a knot when I begin. I weave in the backs of stitches that are already there. And I, and I, and I do it three times. And that third time is what kind of locks it in. Like if I do it two, I can still pull on it and have um, the pieces come out. But the three, it's that third turn, or that basically that second turn. Oh, uh, that kind of locks it. Oop. Uh, got a little knot there. Okay. There we go. Should be good to go now. I'm gonna just leap up and do the satin stitch for this this first window. This first window here. So. With satin stitch, you want to start on, you know, you have your shape. You want to start on one side of the shape and then go up to the other side of the shape. I'm going to do vertical stitches. You can do horizontal. I just think the verticals look really pretty. So I'm going to do like long vertical ones. Um, so I'm going to start on this side. I'm going to make a stitch that goes up to here, but then I'm going to come all the way back down here to do the next stitch. So I'm gonna always start on the one side and I'm always gonna end on the other side. If you zigzag and do it, your thread won't lay as flat. Uh, and and it actually, you know, might, if, if one of the threads breaks in the fabric, then the whole thing will kind of fall apart. So you wanna always start on one side and go to the other. There you go, I'm starting on one edge so there's our, there's our first stitch. So I started at the bottom um, right and I went to the top right. And now I'm gonna go back to the bottom and I'm going like literally one of the fabric threads away, one or two. So just like right next to it, maybe even closer. And that, that's one thread away. So right, right there, really close. So I'm at the bottom again and I dropped the needle. And then we're gonna go right up to the top, right next to where that last stitch ended. There we go. And we're just gonna basically keep filling in this space. And you don't you don't have to use a hoop. I think a hoop on satin stitch is actually kinda of, kinda of helpful, but um, We've been going without a hoop so far, so I'm just gonna keep going here. Just don't pull too tight because you don't wanna bunch those windows together. But there we go. So we're gonna go until we've reached the other side to the left edge. If you wanted to um, do this in one swoop, you could go to the top and then come all the way back to the bottom right away. 
and do it within the same stitch. That's That would actually speed up the process a little bit. Let's do that. Oh, Christy says satin stitch without a hoop is very brave. Yeah, if you have a small hoop, I would give it a go. Luckily, these are very little um, little windows that we're doing here. So um, it's not the end of the world. All right. Like you're not doing tons of tons of spaces. We're just doing a little bit here. There, but since all the threads are going in the same direction, it looks, you can kind of see the sheen on it. Technically, if you want this like really, really like a super perfect satin stitch, use just one strand of floss and then you'll get like a really shiny, pretty satin look to, to your stitches. But um, it'll get, you can fill up a space a whole lot quicker uh, when you're using more than one strand of, of the floss. So I'm using a few here. You can just go underneath a little bit and push and pull your stitches a little bit if they seem to be bunching up, but I think we're good. I think one more maybe will do it. So back to the bottom. Yeah, maybe two more stitches. Uh, Gretchen says, I'm using my hoop and I think I'm going to outline the windows. That's a good... That's a good choice. You can do just uh, cute little outlines for it. Uh, but there we go. So that is our first window. Yeah, I think that's gonna add a nice little extra extra touch to it. Kind of go, it brings in the purple from here too, I think. So that's, that's nice. Um, you know what? I think I am gonna do the rest in a hoop. I'll show you how to put a hoop on. So this is, um, I have a little four inch hoop and I think that actually might work perfect for this. I didn't really want to do a hoop with these, with the single chain stitches, because these are really easy to do without a hoop. But yeah, satin stitch with a hoop might be a hair easier. Uh, first, I'm going to just come up at the next spot just so I can keep an eye on where my thread is. You know, normally I'd put on a hoop um, with without the thread on yet, but there we go. So I'm going to just kind of put this all in the middle. I have a little four inch hoop. Your, see, your seems to have space between the stitches. So the space between these stitches, um, try going a little closer together. So uh, um, just like literally one thread length away on the fabric um, will do it. And uh, even if it's looking a little further apart, if you go in the same stitch every once in a while, then uh, um, you might be able to, um, you might be able to, I'm gonna move this over. Hold on. You might be able to push the threads a little bit to give the effect that um, they're closer together. Okay, here we go. And if I put it a little looser, like I'm just pushing on a little, so it's a little looser in the hoop, then I can do the in and out method. Eh, that's, I'm going to do the stabbing method. So the in and out method, where you go in and out in the same motion, that's called the sewing method. The stabbing method is when you go all the way down and all the way up in different motions like this. And I actually find that you get a little bit better accuracy doing it this way. There, I'm going, if you look close, I'm going literally one fabric thread away from my last stitch. So it's a quick, easy way to fill in a space. You could really fill this space with any type of stitch that you want. like. You could fill it with a bunch of back stitches or a bunch of chain stitches. You could just outline it. 
whatever you want to want to do. Yeah, sometimes if my stitches are looking too far apart, like I'll, I'll do this one maybe a little further apart. Well, uh, sometimes you can even, like if you go way too far apart, you could come back in with an extra stitch. So like this is maybe, maybe a hair apart, like I can see space there. I can either come in between the last two stitches with an, an extra stitch, so I'm going in between the last two. So we're just kind of adding a filler stitch, or you could just go right in the same space as before, or just like, yeah, just in the same space, and then kind of in the same space above too, and that will kind of push, push the last bit over a little bit, so it'll kind of like squish in more stitches into a smaller space and and that can give the effect of that you filled the space all right i think that looks good i'm gonna jump to the next one oh it's uh, sue says it's supposed to be hot and humid in southern new england oh my gosh you guys we had a heat a heat warning today. It was um, mid 90s, which is excessive here because we have kind of full humidity too. Uh, I'm in Minnesota here, and oh god, they're actually we're gonna have like a big supposed like wind storm tonight, like wind and um, wind and rain in northern Minnesota, and they're like warning warning campers because a lot of people are up north camping um they're warning campers to have a place to go like a place to shelter if it gets bad or if trees start falling down and stuff so ugh, crazy oh so nora's saying i don't know if this would help but i always stitch in the middle of the space eventually the space is filled does that make sense so um i i do that sometimes too so i think what i think what nora is saying is sometimes she'll start instead of on the edge the, the like the right edge she'll start in the middle and work her way out one way and then work her way out the other way that's that's what i'm guessing um you're meaning and I do that sometimes too, especially if there's like in the middle, if there's like a point I need to hit. Like for example, if I was stitching a heart, I would probably start in the middle because I got like that bottom point of the heart and that middle point, And I wanna make sure that I get those perfect and exact. Um, so I might start there and then work my way to the edges and then come back to the middle and work my way out. All right, I think we got maybe two more. Yeah, I think one more. Just because this one's looking a little skinnier than, than this guy here. But it just looks like a, like a filled in block of like a shiny little um, rectangle there. Okay, I am hoping I have enough thread for the last one. I suspect I might just be a hair short, but I hope not. That would be a big bummer, but I'm gonna just try for it. Maybe maybe this one will just be a little bit skinnier, but ugh, I may have to get a new piece of thread just to add like three more stitches or something to to this, uh, this window. I think we're gonna lose um, thread chicken today Ugh, which is gonna be a bummer uh, do I have enough I don't know these stitches might be a little further apart a little more airy here so I can get these last stitches in Oh, I just need two. Can I do two? Oh, I think we maybe have it here, you guys. 
All right, one more, and I'm gonna weave in this end, which is gonna be tricky because I don't have any thread left. But let's let's give it a go. All right, I think I think we did it. I think we played a perfect game of thread chicken there. Although I'm gonna I'm gonna take it off the needle for a second, take it out of the hoop because I think it'll be easier to weave in the ends. But ah, it's looking cute. Oh, our little purple windows. I'm happy with those. All right, let's weave in this itty bitty end. Pat, I, I, I've never thought about it that way before, but that's funny. Pat says, do you ever sew faster when you're running out of thread thinking you will have enough? <laughs> like if you're racing, racing to the end of the thread. I'm, I'm still just kind of trying to grab some of these threads. I'm trying not to pull too hard because I don't want to affect the front at all, but I am trying to still get enough threads to lock lock my um, thread in place here. I think I might go one more time. Just weaving it in. Ah, all right, we did it. Good. There, I can snip close to the end there. And that didn't take hardly any time. Look at our cute little windows on there. All right, I'm liking that a lot. So let's just take a look at where we're at. Um, all right, so I think next up, I am just going to continue with um, the next row, the next column here of little stitches. I love how um, had adding the stitches really made this a whole lot lighter. I mean, doesn't doesn't um, this strip just look so much lighter than the other other strips because we put that light thread on here? Um, so I'm curious, kind of what this strip, which is like extra dark, what what that'll look like. So again, I'm gonna leave that quarter inch at least at the bottom because that'll get sewn into the quilt. I don't want to put, you know, I don't want you know my stitches to be just sewn over. So I'm going to um, leave that little bit of edge, and then yeah, we'll just go up to the top with um, our single chain stitches again that we did yesterday. Uh, let's grab some more floss. I think I'm making a little bit of a tangled mess here. Um, I'm getting, like, I usually get about 24 inches, but I'm being kind of greedy a little bit on on this project because the single chain stitches use a lot of, a lot of thread. Um, but usually just for the sake of repetitive motion, I'll, and just um, each time the thread goes through the fabric, it's like rubbing the thread. It's adding, like getting friction on the thread. Um, not getting friction on the thread, but it is, there is friction when it goes through and that friction kind of can wear down the thread. Uh, so I am, I, I try to use less thread but it's just so tempting to use a little bit more, especially when you know you're gonna use it up really quickly. So I'm, I'm taking my three strands out. Oops, I got a little knot at the end here. There we go. It, it's helpful if you just kinda of drag your hand through it after each time that you pull a thread out. I think my last thread, since I didn't do that, got tangled up a little bit, but we're fine. All right, let's get these three strands together. All right, and now let's let's run it through that thread conditioner again. I'm going to use that Huga again. <laughs> I have not gotten a a knot yet using this, so pretty happy, pretty happy with using the thread conditioner, uh, even on this large, you know, fat embroidery floss not just your little little thread. So that's, that's been exciting. I haven't done that before, uh, before yesterday, so uh, I'll be using it a lot more, I think. And it just smells good. It just, all of these just smell amazing while you stitch. So I think I'm gonna put, I think I'm gonna put one with like each project that, you know, might contain embroidery or something. I'll just like, I'll, I'll have them about and I'll just keep putting them with projects, I think. All right, let's uh, shimmy sham back down here. Oh, what, what does this one smell like? Uh, Tracy is asking. So I was describing this one as it, it kind of smells like, 
if you were having like a picnic in a pear orchard. <laughs> like the sun is warm. Um, uh, you can smell the fruit on the trees. And you have a blankie because fuzzy things are nice and <laughs> that's kind of what this smells like <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense at all but that's that's what I think <laughs> alright I'm going to start with another away knot and again this is just so I have so I can kind of reserve thread to weave in later because I don't have any thread at the bottom of here that I can weave in so I'm just going to kind of make and put it in my fabric over here about like four inches away or so. Oh yay, Joe uh, says that she thinks she's getting her bundle tomorrow. So uh, um, your embroidery of the month bundle. Yes, so you guys, next week, right when we're done stitching this guy, we're gonna be working on the embroidery of the month, which is our fabric only scissors. And uh, um, I'm, so excited to do this and you've gotten a little preview of how to do these single chain stitches this week we're going to be doing a whole lot of them to make these make these flowers for this floral handle uh, so I'm really excited about this I think this would be like a really cute tote bag or something that you could put like a project in just trying to visualize a tote bag here I think that'd be fun I'll have to think about maybe doing that with this one but yeah so we'll be stitching that right up uh, I do have bundles available still, and the bundles come with my new packs of floss. So 23 skeins of embroidery floss, my new pocket skeins from uh, Penguin and Fish Pocket Skeins. They're half the size of uh, a normal skein of floss, so they're great for just like small projects and stuff. Does that one use punch embroidery? It does not. So uh, um, I'm guessing you're meaning like that, like what we did, um, that needle punch a while ago where you put the thread into like that punching machine. Nope, it is, it is not like that. I've actually never done something like that to make it look like embroidery. Um, this is just normal em embroidery, so... Um, just kind of exactly what we're doing here. So again, making our single chain stitches. So single chain stitches are, are easy to do without a hoop. Um, what I'm doing is I'm coming up where I want to make a stitch. I'm going back in the same spot and then I'm coming up. All my stitches are upright so they're all going in the same direction for this particular project so I'm going just up um, and then I'm I'm leaving the needle like halfway in and then I'm taking my thread and just wrapping it around the top of the top of the needle here and then pulling all the way through that gets me my little loop don't pull it too tight you want it to still look like the teardrop shape and if you're pulling too tight then uh, um, then it'll just start pulling your fabric and it will look like one single fat chain or fat stitch, not like a nice pretty teardrop. And then we have to lock it down with an anchor stitch. So that's just going to the, uh, on the other side of, of that loop and making the tiniest stitch. You're not in the same hole as what you just came out of, but you're just like one thread away and you're making the tiniest, tiniest stitch on top. And all that's doing is holding that loop in place. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm making a stitch and then I'm doing that little anchor stitch, that tiny little stitch on top, but then I'm also coming out again at where I wanna start the next stitch. So I'm kind of doing two tasks with this last bit. And that's one of the reasons I'm doing that is so I don't have to pull to the back of my thread, to the back of my piece. Uh, this way I can always keep that needle on the front. And that should help me avoid having knots. We'll go right here. So now this is the stitch 
or the part of the process, like I was talking about yesterday, that takes up tons of floss and uh, um, takes the most time on this project. So feel free to skip it if you want. It does still look like a lavender field or, you know, even a poppy field um, without doing all the stitches. I do think that all these stitches add like such a nice texture to, to the whole piece though. I'm going just randomly trying to keep them sort of feeling random, like, but still, I don't know, similar distances away from each other. But still trying to, trying to make it look a little random. Kind of fun. We talked last night how you could actually, I did this little drawing, you could actually make them kind of like bushes, so you could, uh, you could not do them all vertical. You could go at little angles and then, you know, this, these are all going left and make like these little bushes. That would be kind of cool. They'd be like little lavender bushes. I, I do actually really like that idea. Oh, so, um, Lisa says she's a lefty. It actually doesn't matter, um, what side you wrap on. So I just kind of, when I put my needle in, I can kind of see that I've, I've, in this case, I've put my needle to the right of my thread. So you can see my thread is on the left here. Um, in that case, I'll go up on the left side and do it. But if I, if I just, you know, happen to come in and I came in on the right side, then I would just go the other way. So it doesn't really matter but I just kind of keep an eye on where my entry point is. Does it feel like my thread is going to the right? If so, then I'll go around from right to left. If it feels like I put in my needle from, you know, on the other side, so my thread feels like it's on the left, then I'll, then I'll go around the left. Otherwise you'll get like a little twist in the bottom, which is fine too, but I just kind of keep a little kind of laser eye on where my needle is. And since I'm uh, right-handed, it's most likely always ending up um, on the right side here. So just when you put the needle in, it's where it, it looks. So just keeping the side the same. But yeah, so if you're doing it left-handed, let's see how well I do with this, you would, um, you know, either side still, like here I'm, I'm doing it left-handed and still going up on that right side. Then I'd go around this way. I'm a little more clumsy left-handed. Let's do another one. I'll show you what it would look like twisted. <laughs> Harder to grab. All right. So I'm going up kind of on the left side now. So in theory, um, so I came up a little bit on the left side, it feels like. So in theory, I would go um, around the right. Like, you know, the, the thread is on the right side, so I'd come up on the right side and go around. If I go the opposite direction this way, um, all that's going to happen is I may have a little itty bitty twist on, on the bottom here. Oops, I ran out of thread. Hold on. Pull that thread up. Ugh, there we go. So I get like a little bit of a, a little bit of a twist, but who cares? <laughs> uh, but that's, that's coming uh, if you kind of switch sides from where it looks like you're putting the needle in. If that makes sense. Oh, okay. So Lisa's has got gotcha. you. Great. Yeah. So this time again, I'm going to go on the left side with my needle. So the thread's on the right side. So I'll, I'll keep going on the right side. I only have a couple stitches left uh, before I gotta change threads. Gosh, maybe this is my last one actually. Yeah, let's get one more. <laughs> Genesis, ha, it's probably good for the brain to sew with the opposite hand. So I, what did I, I did a project recently where I did that, tried to sew with my left hand. I forget what, what we were working on here, but 
Yeah, first of all, I think it was my right hand that felt more uncoordinated. I was realizing that, oh, my, my left hand's doing just fine, but my left hand, when I'm stitching normally with my right hand like I am now, my left hand is doing a lot of work, like a lot of hidden work. Like it's feeling the backs of the stitches and it's feeling where the needle's coming in. Um, and it's work that my right hand didn't know what to do. So <laughs> when I switched, when I switched to stitching with my left hand, my right hand couldn't do all that extra like holding and feeling work. Uh, so that, that was interesting. I wasn't expecting that. Um, so it was actually my dominant hand that couldn't do my non-dominant tasks very well. Um, like the left hand isn't just sitting idle there. It was doing stuff and my right hand didn't know those things. <laughs> but my left hand could do the like main part just fine. So yeah, <laughs> actually just from those few stitches, my hand cramped up a little bit. It's not used to that. But you're right. I think that would be just a good like do a whole project with your non-dominant hand and see how that goes. All right, I'm gonna snip that um, extra little knot that we did, that away knot, and that's kind of releasing that extra thread, the thread that we have on reserve here. Let's weave in those ends as well. Just grabbing some of well, the backs of the threads here. This is pretty short, but I think I can go the three bits. All right, there we are. Get rid of our excess thread. Okay, we definitely have time to keep going here. So uh, I'm a little spaced further apart than maybe I was here, but you know, at the base it looks um, pretty similar. So I, I feel like I almost need like a little warm up period. And then as I go, it, um, I kind of get everything kind of more equidistant, but actually it looks totally fine still. But look how it's lightening up this um, dark fabric here. That's kind of, kind of exciting. All right, I have this uh, other, the next piece that we already took it apart from last time. Let's, um, let's run through the thread conditioner again. That this has been fun to use for sure. Oh, it smells amazing. Okay. Oh, so that's a great, great thing. No, Noeline is saying that if she's using the stabbing method, which is where you go down and then pull the thread and then you stick it back up and then pull the thread instead of going in and out in the same motion. Uh, so if you're using the stabbing method, she says that she puts the needle in with her right hand and pulls the needle out with her left. That is fabulous. Uh, um, that really, I mean, I'm, a, I'm guessing you're using an embroidery stand because you kind of need something to hold the fabric um, to do that. So if you have an embroidery stand, which kind of has that built in hoop, you can have it like hover in space and then you can have your right hand doing work and then your left hand doing work and your left hand brings it back up and then your right hand can do it. That's, that's sounds nice. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's weave in the ends. Oh, Sue saying the embroidery makes such a difference. It really changes the texture of, of the whole piece, I think. It adds a whole nother layer um, to look at visually. I, I'm, I'm really having fun, fun with it. It does take that extra time. So you can always just be like, meh, no thanks, and, and move on. And you'll still have a nice piece, I think. But yeah, the embroidery really is adding to it, I think. All right, let's fill this up with some more stitches. And this little wrap around thing that I'm doing, you don't, you, a different way to do it is, um, so here I'm starting my next stitch. You can kind of make the, the thread in the shape of a loop before you make your stitch. And then you can do 
that shape and then just start pulling. And as long as you're pulling within the loop, then you'll be fine as well. But I, I do like, I think you're prone to less knots if you um, go up and then then go around your, your needle. So it's a little extra step, but I think it's actually saving you the step of having to kind of create that, that loop out of your thread. If that makes sense. Oh, thanks, Rebecca. I'm having a fun time stitching it for sure. So this is the second time I've made it. <laughs> uh, the first, I have not made it more than that one time for for the project. I know someone asked asked yesterday how many times I've made this. This is just the second time. But I'm excited. So I've actually sent off the original to Pat. Um, so Pat Sloan is is like hosting this project um, through Orophil. And uh, she's taking all of the blocks that, de that the designers made and she's making it into the like official quilt. So this is the, the Orophil quilt and I think they're gonna like show it at, well, you know, I don't know. There aren't really any shows going on really uh, because of COVID obviously, but um, there is an official quilt and those are the original blocks of the designers. So I don't actually even have my original block anymore. Um, so this is the one that will be going into, into my quilt. Um, I do think this would make a really cute pillow though. Like if you have a friend or something that went to Italy and is missing it because they can't travel anymore, this would be like a, a fun, um, fun little pillow, I think. And like I said, the sewing on this took an hour. <laughs> Our leisurely hour that we worked here um, a couple nights ago is, is how long it took. Uh, it did take, you know, another bit of time to cut all the fabric. That Cutting the fabric, man, that's, that's the part that I always forget about and always takes tons of time. But that just took, uh, you know, one other hour. And I'm sure anyone else would be able to do it way faster than what I did. Oh, so Sue's saying that she thinks that the stitches come out more evenly by wrapping the needle. I, I think I agree with you as well. You're in, you're in more in control, I think, if you're, if you're the one making this loop like that versus, um, versus how we were talking before, like how another way to do it is just to kind of make the loop like this. So I got like this floating loop here and then I can just go in and then pull up straight right away. Either or, but yeah, I feel a little bit more in control for sure when I do it this way. Then I don't have to make that loop. I don't have to worry about coming up in the right spot. I can just go and then take care of it now. All right, we're getting low on the thread again. Uh, we'll get a few more stitches. Wow, lightening up the space. I can tell that this was on a lighter background for sure because the contrast of the, the tones between this purple and this kind of lighter gray is not as high contrast as here, but that's kind of fun. It'll be, it's kind of just neat to see the differences between the variations of this gray fabric. Kind of shows off the fabric a little bit more too on how it is kind of variegated. I do think like I could have gotten away with just calling this a poppy field too because this um, orange has all these like little red circles on. It's my, it's my lavender in poppy field. How about that? But I think if you stitch these little chain stitches in red, it would look poppy-ish too. And I think that'd be cool. All right, I think, um, I think I'm gonna do this as my last stitch with this thread or floss. I keep saying thread uh, um, 
I'm using that term interchangeably with um, with floss. So when I say thread sometimes and floss sometimes, I'm, I'm really meaning the same thing. Oh, Pat saying, I hope that Pat Sloan will be able to sew the quilt together by then. I know. So Pat, again, who is hosting this project um, with Orophil, I'm going to I'm going to do one more stitch. Um, she broke her wrists. So she's had a couple surgeries, I guess, already. And uh, and just is, can't sew right now. Ugh, what a nightmare. So, um, yeah. Someone else might be, and she's making every block too, so she's got to get other people to make her blocks for her now as well, like just example blocks. Um, but ugh, that can't be enjoyable. <laughs> so I'm hoping I'm hoping she is feeling better soon and will be okay. We're gonna have to pull some more floss after this. Oh yes, yeah, so Sue's saying, almost like the sun moving across the su sky, changing color of the land. Yep, so, yep, that's that's kind of like this. This is in a little bit more sunshine yet. This, we're in some shadow here. Um, you know, maybe this tree, maybe this tree here is casting this really big shadow there. <laughs> And it's not quite hitting this part. So so I think the sun's coming at this angle a little bit, hitting the tree, casting this big old shadow. And I was like, oh, the tree's not casting a shadow on here, but I suppose the, the house, maybe the house is set back a little further, so that's not casting a shadow here. <laughs> I don't know. All right, um, I think we'll do one more yet tonight. We have a little bit of time here. So this is great. So I'm I'm excited with my progress here. So I think on Monday, I think we're going to try and finish this on Monday yet. Um, I was thinking maybe it'd go to Tuesday, but I think we'll be able to stitch, you know, a little bit more tonight. So I think we'll be able to do a whole row plus our little bit of extra that we're left with tonight, um, hopefully all in one day. And then that's it. We're, we're done after that. So... I'm thinking on Tuesday we will be able to start the fabric, um, the fabric scissors embroidery. So that's the fabric only um, scissors. That project that I was showing you a little bit earlier. So I'm thinking that we'll start on on Tuesday. So here it is again, you guys. The fabric only. This is our embroidery of the month um, on Penguin and Fish. Dot com. But yeah, I'm, I'm really excited for this feller. He's going to be fun. But yeah, so let's, we're going to shoot for Tuesday on that. So we're going to hopefully finish this up on Monday. Start that Tuesday. Uh, Deborah, I'm not, I don't remember. I, was she riding a bike? I can't remember. Um, someone here might know. Uh, Deborah's wondering how Pat got hurt. How she broke her wrists. Okay. Let's thread this, thread condition this again. This has been really helpful. I, I, yeah, I, I mean, I can tell a difference that I'm not getting tangled as much. It's actually kind of fun. It does put a waxiness to the thread, but I don't know. I don't think that'll be a problem. All right. Again, it smells amazing. Oh, I'm just reading some comments from earlier. Tracy says that they have a nest um, with two baby hummingbirds in it. That's pretty amazing. Wow, a little baby hummingbird nest. Oh, so I guess she was on a walk and tripped. Blech. Yikes. No fun. Uh, well, I suppose it's better than breaking a leg or a hip or something. That, that'd be a little worse. Oh, tripped on uneven sidewalk. Ugh. 
I've twisted an ankle doing that. All right. Well, I hope she feels better soon. Sure, that put a kink into things for sure. <laughs> a little bit long thread again. I, I, I don't usually, again, I'm, I'm, I try to avoid using this much thread. I mean, first of all, I have to pull it twice through and um, it, it's, and then again, you're rubbing it against the fabric more so it might become frayed along the way. There we go, now I can pull it with one, one bout. But I'm being greedy, <laughs> really. I wanna get as many of these stitches with one thread as possible because I know that these single chain stitches take up tons of thread, especially how I'm moving around the, the piece. Kind of jump in here and there. Ugh, Diane says that her neighbor did that in spring and she fell and broke both ankles. Ah! And she has her cat, she had a cast up to her knees on both legs. Oh my God. <sighs> that would be a situation. <laughs> Gosh, that are both wrists, uh, you know, I don't know. Probably the ankles because you can't get around and do any work, really. Um, whereas with wrists, you can't, like, do work, but you can move from one place to the other and kind of, like, manage something, I would think. Ugh, yeah, that's, you know, both pretty poor situations. Ooh, this conditioner smells amazing. So I, I saw that you got some few of you guys have ordered some of this Wisecraft handmade um, thread conditioner. I'd love to hear what you guys think about it when it when you get it. I'm really liking it. One of those fun things you didn't know you needed, but then it's just like makes you happy when you when you use it all right so we will stitch tonight till I'm done with this thread uh, which will probably go it looks like I have tons of thread but it'll go pretty quickly with these stitches um, and then Monday, we will come back and finish it up. I think we'll be able to do that. A bit faster than I thought for this. So let me know if you guys are doing anything exciting over the weekend. I'm, I'm wondering, uh, like I, I did hear mention on the radio that we're gonna have the humidity set in and I'm thinking we're already there. So uh, it'll be interesting. It might be a lot of being inside. Um, we'll see. Actually, we're gonna be going to the warehouse tomorrow, you guys, uh, the Penguin and Fish Warehouse. So tomorrow, um, in the morning, if you wanted to get a, a embroidery of the month bundle yet with all that, with all the floss and everything in, um, that would be a great time because it'll get out right away, um, at the beginning of the week. So you'll probably have it while we're still stitching. Uh, but yeah, anything, anything, um, ordered, tomorrow will still go out early because we've, we've with COVID we've only been going to the warehouse a couple times a week but we're still trying to ship everything really quick Ooh, 
Gretchen is canning some tomatoes that she grew. Okay, that reminds me. We have to do... We got some blueberries when we were visiting my parents, and we got a... We have to freeze them. Um, like a five, you know, pound thing of blueberries. Uh, we also got peaches, but I've already frozen those. I've left a few out, but I ate them all. So uh, we have um, halved frozen peaches um, that I that I halved that were ripening um, for a couple days. So those I gotta put into bags. But yeah, I think we have to do some of that kind of gardeny type stuff. Oh, Rebecca's visiting her son tomorrow. That's exciting. Yay! That'll be nice. That'll be nice, nice. Oh! I was reading comments and didn't realize I had a whole big... I didn't finish pulling my thread through there. Wow, we're covering some ground on this. I think we're going to get done really quick on Monday. That's good. So we might have a little shorty day on, on Monday. We'll see. Still takes a while to do these strips. Ugh, this would be a perfect um, movie watching project though. Just all these little little single chain stitches. Alright, I think I'm gonna try and fit in one more over over here. Right there. It can be difficult to do this without, uh, like, a pattern. Like, I'm just trying to scatter these stitches around and be random. I know, like, if you're, if, if you're trying to, you know, if you want it to just be perfect and just right, that's, that can be a lot to handle, like, the idea of being random with it. But give it a go. It really is kind of fun just going wherever and just letting it be like, okay, that's where that little lavender decided to grow and that's just totally fine. Oops, lost my, lost my needle there. Sometimes when I get low on thread on my needle, I'll accidentally pull it out. Ooh, we're a little lower than I thought. So I think I got maybe two stitches left on this for me. Maybe we can get Maybe we can get three out of it. Uh, let's try one more. I think I can maybe force one. Let's do a little baby one. There we go. Okay. Oops, I gotta do that anchor stitch first. It's gonna just flip to the back, but my needle's not back there yet. Okay, let's weave in that end. Just enough thread for that. There we are! Let's take a look, you guys! Ooh, pretty! So I do, um, it really is quite different from the background on this fabric. It is a lot more contrasty, but it's nice. I mean, I, you're, we're still getting a lightening of that of that um, strip by a lot. And I think when I hold it up um, in a second, I think that'll be really, really apparent. But oh, our little windows are in. I'm excited. So I may, uh, when we get done 
get done stitching this on Monday, I might give it a little, a one little final press because I have been handling it a, a lot. I mean, I'm going to give all of these a press later, so I suppose it doesn't really matter all that much. Um, so maybe I'll just wait, but uh, it is, I do kind of like giving it a final press. But all right, let's take a look, you guys. All right, hello. Uh, so let's just see. Oh yeah, we're lightening up that middle line for sure. Ooh, it is pretty because there's a little bit of purple in that strip. So I think it's really making the stitching look like extra purple, isn't it? Ooh, I like it. It does kind of look like the light's hitting it and the shadow is getting uh, one of these lines and and um, the light's hitting, hitting the other. It's kind of fun. I like it. <laughs> All right. Oh, uh, so we will continue this on Monday. I think we'll get it done by then. So on Tuesday, uh, get ready for the fabric scissors. That is when we will start stitching this. That is, this is our embroidery of the month. Uh, so we'll be starting that on Tuesday because I don't think we'll have any problem getting this this uh, uh, orofill block done on Monday. And then we'll just add it to the add it to the collection. We'll start to um, I'll lay all of them out here tomorrow or on Monday and we'll see we'll see what this quilt is gonna start looking like I'm excited um, yeah we're over halfway done with the blocks for this already if you can believe it because uh, we're in July <laughs> uh, but awesome you guys thanks for joining me again tonight uh, have a fabulous weekend and I will see you guys again on Monday good night